simple. We take a, a, a really simple, just, just two note lick. That's all I'm doing. Eight to 10. I might repeat it, I might not. I haven't even played it yet. So the, the placement of where that happens is going to have so much impact on just those two notes. And this is what we're talking about. When we're talking about the rhythmic phrasing, when we're talking about not needing to learn all of the, the positions of the pentatonic or other scales to make your solos impactful, is making your solos impactful with lesser notes, learning how to use just the pentatonic before you go up into other positions. And then um, once you start learning these new scales, they, they, they kind of um, take uh, the, I, I was gonna say a whole new meaning, but really just the actual meaning of the scale. So watch this. A little bit of volume too right there at the end. Now, if I do the same exact thing, if I pull this back again and I come right in. It does have a little bit less. And I didn't use as much volume. So something that simple of using a little bit of that volume dynamic to end the phrase, but starting that phrase not right on the downbeat. Letting that sit. The longer I let that sit, the more impactful it's going it, it, the more impact it's gonna have. That has much more of a language feel to it. Um, then once again, I'm just gonna play this same exact thing uh, or well close to it But just coming right in and not using that volume just those two things alone It loses so much just based on those two things um, So these are the things that we get into especially either in the private lessons or um, the course that I'm gonna do so uh, I want you guys to be thinking about that if you're it's funny because if I let this go even like listen to what now that you've heard it a few now that you've heard the solo a few times so this is something really effective especially if you're going around um, and, and kind of doing either an open jam or kind of trading uh, with the other musicians now coming in even later right And that first phrase can hold a little bit more, uh, a little bit more note choice. There's, there's a little bit more happening there because that pause happens. Now that one beat, even for people that aren't musicians, they know that that, that is supposed to be where, quote unquote, the solo begins, right? So by not beginning there, you're, you're creating a, wait a minute, why, you know, why is this guy not talking? You can almost think of it like, uh, like if you're kind of sitting uh, in a room with like with a stage and a microphone, right? And whether it's like a comedy show or something like that, somebody just walks out on stage, right? And you're just like, oh, here we go. Uh. And then the longer that they don't say anything, the more you're just like, well, what are they going to say? And that makes you listen absolutely to the first thing that they're that they're coming out with. Um, so if I string a bunch of phrases together, right, those are phrases that's like speaking very quickly. Um, that's not just a jumble of words. They are strung together, but there is no, there is no emphasis until it gets to the end. Right. This is now a way when we're using um, when we're using space to emphasize the first part of that phrase because we have space leading up to it, and then and then the back end of the phrase is always um, important or emphasized. So if I add these pauses, so now think of that.
all just those little dynamics are where I'm starting. I can add more emphasis to the beginning um, as well as the end of the phrase by by doing that um, and deciding, especially when that when that solo is going to start. Um, so cool things to work on, guys, um, and and really pulling these together a little bit a little bit more subtle than than some of the other things that we're we're touching.